Hello everyone, welcome to Probability and Statistics for Data Science. Today we're going to explain how to estimate probabilities from data. Up to now we have defined probability and conditional probability and all their properties, and that's really important because we have to know those properties in order to manipulate these objects um, in a mathematically correct way. But equally important is where do these probabilities come from? And today we're going to explain just that, how to use data to estimate probabilities and conditional probabilities. This is a good moment to um, explain the distinction between probability theory and statistics. What we've been doing up to now, where we're defining probability, defining conditional probability, and so on, that's probability theory. Probability theory provides a mathematical framework that allows us to describe uncertainty in a mathematically consistent way. But it does not care at all about connection to reality. In contrast, statistics is all about the connection to reality. Statistics studies how to extract information from data, and for that it uses a lot of tools from probability theory. So these two disciplines are definitely intertwined, and when we use them for uh, data science, even more so. Today, we're going to be focusing on the statistics side of things. So how do we use data to estimate um, probabilities and conditional probabilities. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we go back to our intuitive definition of probability. So remember that when we were thinking about what a probability should mean, we were interpreting uh, the uncertain phenomenon that we want to characterize with these probabilities as an experiment that can be repeated over and over and over. And what we said is that the probability of an event is the fraction of times that we observe that event when the experiment is repeated many, many, many times. OK, so how do we apply that to estimate probabilities? Well, imagine that we have the following data. We have rolled a six-sided die 60 times, and we observe eight twos. What do you think should be our estimate for uh, the probability of rolling a two, if we go back to this intuition? Well, we can just think that these 60 times that we roll the die are repetitions of this experiment. So then it's funny because I often do like this and it's out of the screen, but maybe it's better because it might be a bit distracting. I move my hands a lot. Um, OK, so what do you think the probability should mean? Should be? It should be 8 over 60, right? Because we see 8 twos out of 60 repetitions. So that's a reasonable estimate for the probability. And it's as simple as that. That's indeed the empirical probability of rolling a 2 according to our data. So more formally, if we want to estimate the probability of an event A, which contains outcomes in a certain sample space omega, and we have a data set with n points, x1 to xn, um, that take values in omega, the empirical probability of A is a statistical estimator. That's a, just a fancy word for an estimate of, of the probability. Uh, the, the empirical probability is just the number of points that end up in A. And we write that in a little bit of a fancy way with this indicator function that is equal to 1 if the point is in A and 0 otherwise, divided by the total number of points. All right, so exactly what we just did for this six-sided die. Um, let's take a look at the six-sided die example a little bit more in detail, uh, just to make sure that you know everything conforms to what we talked about in the video on probability spaces. We have a sample space of possible outcomes, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. We consider a collection, which is the power set of omega, so every possible subset. And what we saw in the video on probability spaces is that in order to define a valid probability measure on this collection of events so that every event has a, a valid probability assigned to it, we just need to determine what is the probability of each of the die rolls, of rolling a 1 or rolling a 2 and so on. Again, okay, remember that these guys have to be non-negative and add up to 1 because the union of these events is equal to the sample space, so their sum of these probabilities have to equal 1. Okay, so Let's just apply empirical probabilities. These are the data. I actually went ahead. I wanted to show you the die, but I, I forgot to bring it. 
Um, there's this die that my daughter has, which I think is not a fair die. And I actually rolled it 60 times and counted the times um, and, and gathered the data in this way. And these are the real data that I observed. And what we see is that, you know, it seems that the probability of rolling a three is quite a bit higher than, than the rest. So how do we estimate empirical probabilities from this data that I gathered? Well, essentially we just divide everything by 60. And realize that because the total number of rows is 60, when we add all of these guys up, they're going to add up to 60. So that the condition that this theta i is, this by the way is theta one, theta two and so on, these empirical probabilities, um, the condition that they're going to add up to one is going to be satisfied automatically. Okay, so empirical probabilities as simple as that. The fraction of data points that are in that event gives you the estimate for the probability of that event. Of course, as you might already be thinking about, um, this estimate is not going to be exact in general. To see, let, let's take a look at a simple example where this is very obvious. Imagine that we flip a coin that is a fair coin, so the probability of heads is actually one half, we flip it 20 times. These are the results. And now we compute our estimate of the probability, which ideally should equal 0.5, right? Because the probability of heads is 0.5. Uh, but when we compute this estimate of the probabilities, most of them are not equal to 0.5. Actually, only one of them is. And if you think about it, imagine we had flipped the coin 21 times, then we're not going to get 10 and a half heads, right? So in that case, you would never get an exact estimate. So in general, empirical probabilities are going to be more accurate if you have more data under certain assumptions that we will talk about later on. Um, you know, just a sneak preview, you need the data to be independent in some sense, right? Because if you flip and you always get the same outcome, then that's not going to be very informative. But we'll talk more about that later on. For now, I just want to emphasize that you need to understand that there's an inherent, inherent limitation in using empirical probabilities, and we have to be aware of it. They're not going to be completely exact. And a lot of statistics is about dealing with that. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Here, we're modeling the voting behavior of politicians in the United States, in particular, politicians that were in the House of Representatives in 1984. We have their votes for two issues. One is about duty-free exports, and another one is about the budget. I imagine that they're approving the budget. I'm not really sure what they were, uh, what the point was with the duty-free exports. Um, the, the data set was not very clear about that. Okay, so here we see how many of them voted yes for both, no for one and yes for the other, and so on and so forth. So now our goal is we want to understand the relationship between these two issues from the data. Okay, so the general question is, if a representative votes yes on budget, are they more likely to vote yes on duty-free exports? And this is kind of a cartoon version of uh, questions that arise in political science when you're trying to analyze the, the behavior of, of politicians. A, you know, a, a very cartoonish version, but still. And probabilistic modeling is actually very useful for those kind of studies. So what are we going to do? We're going to interpret voting as a repeatable experiment, okay, which, where each outcome is one politician, and we're going to build a probability space. So what are the possible outcomes that we can observe? Um, the possible outcomes are the, the voting pattern of the politician. So this could be yes, 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 no, no, yes, no, no. Okay, those are the possible outcomes within our probability space. And we're interested in two events, the event yes on budget and yes on duty free. And in particular, we're interested in the dependence. So you can already see that we're going to maybe look at conditional probabilities. Okay, but before that, let's just take, let's just use empirical probabilities to estimate the probability of, of our events of interest. So here we want the probability of B, which is yes on budget. So what do we need to do? We need to count how many yeses we see for budget. So 151 plus 88. 
and then we have to divide by what? Maybe think about it for a moment. We have to divide for uh, uh, divide by the total number of votes. Okay, so 151 plus 88 is equal to 239. We divide by the total number of votes, which is 400. And this is our estimate of the empirical probability that a representative or a politician votes uh, yes on budget, roughly 0 0.6. All right, so what about the probability that they vote yes duty-free? You know, try to do it on your own, maybe pause the video really quickly. So we need to, the number of yeses for duty-free divided by the total number of votes again, which is going to be also 400, right? So 172 divided by 400, the probability is 0 0.43. Okay, but what we're really interested in is in the dependence of these two events. Okay, we want the conditional probability of D given B. So now let's go back to our intuitive definition of conditional probability so that we can maybe modify the way we have defined empirical probabilities to give us an estimate of conditional probability. So again, when we were thinking intuitively about conditional probability, what we said is there's this experiment associated to the probability space, it's repeated many, 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 many times. But now if we're trying to condition on an event A, we're only going to take a subset of those repetitions of the experiment in which A occurs. We're only going to be interested in those. And out of those, we're going to look at the fraction for which B also occurs. OK? That's how we, you know, we thought of conditional probability intuitively. So now, Let's use that intuition to estimate the, probability, the conditional probability of, um, of D given B uh, for this example. And then we'll build up on this to define the empirical conditional probability uh, more, more formally. OK, so now we want to condition on the budget being yes. So it's natural to do what? Think about it for a moment. Well, it's natural to just take a subset, take the subset of data for which budget is yes. And now out of those, we want to know how many, uh, well, what's the fraction of politicians that voted yes for duty-free export. And those are 151 out of a total of 151 plus 88. Okay, so 151 plus 88 happen to be 239, the um, conditional probability is 0 0.632. Okay, what about the conditional probability of D given the complement of B? The complement of B is just that they voted no for the budget. Well, same idea. We take all of the politicians that voted no for the budget and how many of them voted yes for um, for duty-free exports, 21. So it's 21 divided by 161. And that's 0 0.13. Okay? So hopefully that made sense. In general, we estimate empirical conditional probabilities in this way. Um, if A and B are events in a certain sample space omega and we have n data points within omega, the empirical conditional probability of B given A is obtained by restricting ourselves to the data points which are in A, all right, so again, with this notation, this is equal to 1 if the data point is in A and to 0 otherwise, so this just gives you the number of points in A. And then we compute, well, the fraction of those, how many of those are also in B. Okay, as simple as that, which is what we just did for our data. And that's how we define empirical conditional probabilities. Okay, so how, uh, what have we learned? We have made our first incursion into the realm of statistics, and we have learned how to estimate probabilities and conditional probabilities from data. And we have also um, learned about one of the main challenges when we do this, which is that they're never going to be exact. Okay, and again, a lot of uh, statistics is about how to estimate to what extent these empirical probabilities are exact or not. We're going to talk that about that much more later on. Thank you very much.